everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. So this week we are continuing on my 1888 Daisy project, which if you have not seen the first video, I will link that down below. This is the second part of that project and hopefully I will get everything finished this week because Halloween is nearly upon us, people. Anyway, as a reminder, this is the dress that I'm currently working on. It is an 1888 Daisy fancy dress costume from the magazine Der Bazaar. And at this point, I have actually already started my sewing for this week, so I'm super excited since it's only Monday and sometimes I don't start sewing till later. <laughs> All that I've done, it's not anything big, but all that I've done is that I have now finished the hem on the underskirt. So that's all done. I cut off the excess. I just did a super, super narrow hem. So I literally turned up basically like the serging at the bottom and then turned it up again. So it's, I think, a half inch or approximately there, five eighths inch, something like that hem uh, because I mentioned this in my last video, but I wound up getting my hem length really really weird and it was like short in the front and way too long in the back but I'm really happy with where it's sitting now and other than the hooks and bars on the waistband the underskirt is complete the nice thing about having the underskirt too is that it should make it a lot easier to hem the overskirt when I get to that point because I already know exactly how long it needs to be so today the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be working on the straps for the bodice so the straps right now as you can hopefully tell they are twill whereas the rest of it is already covered in wool so I just need to cut a piece of wool that is the exact size of the strap plus a little bit of extra length because it's going to overlap the wool down here by half an inch plus it's going to be need to be folded under by half an inch so it will come down just a little bit below here and cover up the raw edges over here on the bodice front and also on the bodice back. So that will be the first thing. Once that's done, I can start on the binding, which I'm very excited about. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to be doing the extra trim on the front, but I think I'm going to bind the neckline first with just like bias tape and then figure out the trim. The trim to me looks like a sort of extra ruched piece. You can see that right on here. And so I think it's just sort of a like doubly ruched piece, maybe on a piece of cording or two pieces of cording that is then applied on top. So I think that's what I'm going to do for it. And I think that'll just be easier to do once the neckline's already finished and done and set. Today will hopefully be bodicey stuff. And I'm hoping that I can get most of that. Well, I won't finish all of the binding today. There's just not enough time since I do my binding by hand once I turn it in. But I'm hoping that I can at least do the machine side of the binding by the end of today. So I better get to work. So what I'm doing here is that I have laid out the strap of the bodice flat on top of my wall. And I decided to go across the grain with this. This is twill. And I think it's like on the bias by the time it gets over here. In any case, it's got a little bit of a stretch to it. The cross grain on the wall has a little bit of a stretch to it. So I figured I would just kind of allow that because I don't want the wall to be responsible for the twill because that isn't really going to work. So I laid it on here and then I traced around it and then remembered I should be filming it. So that's why the pink lines are already there. I marked where the stitches were that basically is where I need this fabric to go to and then I'm adding a half inch. So I marked little hash marks on each side, same with down at the front of the, the base of the strap in the front. And then I traced all around it with my friction pen and then I added the half inch so that I can fold that under and half inch over here so I can fold that under. So that hopefully should work as my piece of wall and I'm going to cut this out and then lay it on top and like make sure that it works and then I will do take that just off and cut the other one out and then that way I'll have two and I'll just put those on just like all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of top stitching here and then over or I might do a hand stitch we'll see I want to look out see how the top stitching works first on the machine and just see if I can get away with that and then over here I'm just gonna like baste it with the machine in place because both of those will be covered with binding 
So as it turns out, one package of bias tape, the kind you buy from Joann's, is just enough by like about four inches to bind the neckline, the arms, eyes, and the hem of a bodice. So everything is bound machine wise on here. The straps are on. I did decide that I am going to hand stitch this down. So I have it just pinned in place here at the bottom and at the top or in the back. And I will hand stitch that as I hand stitch the binding down as well. So my next step is that I have to press all of the binding in place and pin it in place and then hand sew it. I'm not sure how long the pressing and pinning will take, but I typically, like, I do have to work tomorrow, but I give myself a little bit more time in the sewing room. It's only 8.15 right now, so I think I am going to, if that all goes pretty quickly, I think I'm going to maybe start on the skirt, the overskirt, and at least see if I can get some panels cut. Again, I'm still waiting on some other fabric for because I don't have enough for the skirt, but I'd like to kind of start it because that will probably make my brain feel like I'm farther along on it and then I'll mostly have decorations to do because I tend to prefer to hand sew when I'm like fed up for the evening and that tends to happen on days when I have to go into work, I get more tired. So tomorrow night I will probably want to do a lot of hand sewing, but tonight I have more energy. So I am going to press all this and I will come back to you potentially tomorrow unless I get actual progress done on the skirt. Okay, so it has been two days since I last checked in with you. It's now Wednesday and those straps are now on and I also put all of the bias binding on all of the edges and that is all hand sewn down into place. So all of that hand sewing took me like forever yesterday that um, I literally just like sat in the living room all evening and did all of that hand sewing because it's bound around the neckline, down at the hem and in each arm's eye. And then I also did my little stitches here and here at the base of the straps. And I put on the last two hooks and bars that I hadn't done yet because I had done all of them except the ones that wind up being on top of the binding. So those are all done now too. And then I also did like kind of a sleeveish mock-up-ish thing. It's literally just a strip of fabric and I gathered up one side and then I gathered the ends and like pulled them up. And I don't think it's right. I haven't tried it onto the bodice yet but I don't think it's right. I think I need to curve them. So I will try this on hopefully tonight, though it's really cold in here, so I don't know. But I will try this probably tonight, and then I will also, if this doesn't work, as I think it's not going to, because it doesn't really hang right when I put it on the dress form, then I will try the other version as well. And then Today, I cut my two panels for the back of the overskirt. So all it is literally so far, because now I'm out of fabric until the other fabric arrives, um, all it is is just two panels that are 45 and a half inches long and the width of the fabric wide, so about like 50-ish something inches wide. I seamed them down the back and then I gathered them across the top with two running stitches on the sewing machine and pulled them up and I was really worried when I was doing this because I was thinking as I was ripping these on the straight grain that it did not seem like enough width for this skirt considering that I only ordered three extra yards and three yards equals two more panels basically and so as I ripped it I was like oh my god this is not enough it's not going to be full enough this is going to look terrible blah 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 and then I like pulled up the gathering and it's basically pretty much as gathered as it could be and that takes it around from the center back to where those side seams with the pockets are and then um since it's two panels is going to be more than enough for the front because the front shouldn't be probably quite as full anyway so I should be fine I just need that to get here and it says it's not getting here until Friday which of course was like the last estimated arrival date so that's annoying and a time crunch and it's hard for me to figure out just how many daisies I need to go around the bottom until I have that here hopefully I can kind of fudge it because that is the other thing that I started today is that I started on my daisies so for my daisy, I think that this is going to work, hopefully, 
but it is cut out of cotton organdy, and I used my large mixing bowl as a guide because this is just shy of 10 inches around, which is, I was going for like nine and a half, so that's basically perfect. I drew a circle, or this is what I did do for my test and what I'm going to do for like 500 of these, but I drew the circle with the bowl and a friction pen, and then I took that circle, and I will link to the tutorial that I found for coffee filter daisies down below, but this that's what I'm following except with organdy. So I take the round of organdy and then I fold it a whole bunch of times in triangles. So half, half again, half again, half again, half again, etc. And then cut the petal shape out. And then what I've done on top of that, so each one is made out of three of those and they are all together, but I have made it so that they're just off from each other a little bit. So it looks really nice and full. And then I sewed kind of around the circle here, just on the machine, just kind of basing. It's a three and a half inch width stitch. But I realized these are all going to be vertical, the ones at least on the bottom of the skirt. And so they need to not like fall down if they're basically like attached here. And so what I did was I actually went and did a line of stitching in the center of each of the front petals. So some of the back petals wind up not being attached, but I'm okay with that. And these will all get put onto the skirt and probably have one tack up at the top to hold it in place. I do still have to figure out the center, so that will be down the road a little bit, but I'm thinking like paint and or beads and or glue and or something. Um, but now I have like 500 days to make, so I better get to work. I decided that I needed a break from cutting out all of my little bits of the like snowflake of the daisy. I only have I think like 12 left to cut something like that but it's just tedious after a while and I wanted to try how the centers would go. So I moved on to the centers which I think I had said originally I was going to try to do with like seed beads and paint and glue and whatever and I went to Joanne's yesterday and seed beads are purchased in tiny little packages and expensive so that was just not going to work and also probably would have been very messy. So I decided instead I would applicate the centers 
And I found this fabric and it was just like perfect for the centers. It's the perfect shade of yellow. You can see it next to the sash here, though the sash reflects light a little bit, but it they really do match, I promise. And I would applique it kind of like I did on the Hosta dress with all of those appliques. So I am now cutting out all of these circles. They are the size of ribbon. So I'm just using this ribbon as a template. And I have done one so far. Now this was my test one where I'd already done in all of the basting around the center and then like all of on the petals and everything. And so with this one, I just kind of eyeballed the center. I don't know if it actually is, but I eyeballed the center and then I just did a zigzag stitch. It's a 1.5 width, 0.3 length, whatever the average um, width is, like the whatever the automatic width is on the machine that's what this but in this I literally like I stuck two pins in it and then I just kind of went for it and it did kind of want to bubble a little bit which is probably why it doesn't look perfectly around if you like see so you can see a little bit of divots but I think it's good enough for the bottom of a skirt and so I yeah I had the pins in there and I literally just went around this was not basted or anything first which probably should have done but I also realized that it didn't actually fill up my random basting that I didn't measure before so you can I picked these stitches out but you can see the scars I haven't pressed it or anything yet so I'm hoping once I press it those will kind of go away um but it, it's got me to thinking that I should maybe baste with this on so I haven't done any of the basting of the snowflakes that I've cut out or anything yet all the ones that are like layered and pinned together like you saw in that little bit of how I'm making this and so I'm thinking I'm just going to layer this on and repin and then baste everything do my like petal basting just because that keeps it neat nice and neat and then do my satin stitch around the outside so I have a bazillion of these to do. I mean, not really, like there's way more to actually cut out because it's times three than there are to do this bit onto. There are, um, while I'm making 16 of these, I still haven't figured out exactly how many I will need to go around the bottom of the skirt, but in the image, you can see eight. So I figure that's half of the skirt and I will make 16. <laughs> and then of course there's those extra four of the shoulders and the hat and the one she's holding. I haven't quite figured out if the hat and the one she's holding might need more than just three layers. I have not cut those or anything yet either. And I still have to figure out how, what kind of base I'm putting for this hat. I had been hoping that I could find just a basic straw hat with a low crown at the thrift store yesterday, but the only straw hats they had that had a remotely low crown were like $6 for the thrift store. That's ridiculous. So yeah, that's not happening. But I also haven't actually just like looked in my closet to see what I have for blanks because my closet is blocked by all of my lighting equipment that I'm not even using right now. And oh, and I'm watching costuming drama while I work on all of this because Noelle is awesome. And anyway, so I have a bunch of work to do on all this, all this fiddly bit. I still haven't dried on the sleeves, which I really need to do, but I just kind of want to make a bazillion daisies until I get super sick of them. And then I can go back to sleeves and hopefully the skirt fabric will arrive today as well. So I am going to get back to all of my cutting and sewing and whatever. And I will check in with you later, maybe when these are done or my skirt fabric arrives. So the flowers are coming along, but they are so tedious. I just feel like there's so many elements to any one flower. Like I have to cut three large circles for each flower. Then I have to fold up each circle into eighths, I guess. Yeah, eighths, and cut the bits out. Then I have to stack those together. Then I have to cut out the yellow center. Then I have to satin stitch around the yellow center. And then I have to do all of the individual stitches on the petals. And that is one flower. And there are 16 of them. So <laughs> it's taking forever. One of the things that I did omit or change since I mentioned before was that I decided not to base these circles on. I wound up being able to do them just fine just by satin stitching with pins in them. So that at least saved me a little bit of time. But that said, I have only completely finished four flowers. Of the other, actually 18 including the shoulders, so of the 18 other flowers, 
three of them still haven't had the little petals cut out even because I just I don't know how many are need, going to need to go around the skirt so I kind of got to a point where I was sick of cutting petals and I was starting to get like a little blistery type thing too from the scissors and so I just kind of put those three aside and I will get to them if I need them but all of the rest of the flowers have their centers satin stitched in so that is 14 flowers have their satin stitches in four of those 14 are done so there are 10 more that need all of the stitches on the petals which I will be accomplishing next even though this is taking forever I gave myself a little bit of a break earlier by working on the bow which you can probably see behind me here so with the bow what I have now done was I stitched the pleats of the big bow part in place and um, stitched all of that together and then I made a little center section that slides over it that is going to have to be hand tacked in place on the back side. I also made the falling tails of the bow and so these I think I had like a quarter of it done basically but I cut out the other sections Put them all together I decided to do a little bit of a curve point bottom here because that's what it looked like on the plate and then I pleated the tops just a little bit to make it a little narrower at the top layered them together and all of that is just pinned in place pinned onto the bow so I'm going to hand sew all of that together and then hand sew that to the sash. The sash end has been finished, but once this is all hand sewn to the sash, then I will hand sew the hooks and eyes also to the sash. I still haven't done the hooks and eyes on the waistband of the underskirt, by the way. The next thing is, it's not actually on here yet, but you can probably see what I've decided to do for the neckline trim. And this was, This little trim, which is like a little rose modern looking trim, I don't know how well you can see this on the video, but it's a trim that I had actually bought intending to make a headband or something like that to go along with a baby dress that I made for my coworker earlier this year. And then I never wound up using this trim. It just didn't wind up working with that fabric, which oddly enough was daisy pattern fabric. And uh, I had hung it on my door intending to return it to Joanne's for, that was I think January. So for ages now. And obviously at some point it was just like, that's not gonna happen. And also, although this was, you know, a slightly more expensive trim, I had this much of it. So it wasn't really that much, but, it turns out that it's pretty much perfect for this. I think it looks really, really good. It kind of gives that ruched look, but it's also like a flowery, light and floaty and cute look. So I think it's going to be just perfect. I will have to hand sew this on, but that's okay. It shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, however, I can't put that or the petals up here. Oh, maybe I've done more of them. I've done four large flowers. And and oh, because these aren't getting the stitches down the center since they're not vertical. So that's what it is. So these are actually done. But yeah, I can't do any of that until I try on the sleeve and figure out the sleeve, which I still have not done. So I still have to figure out the sleeve. I don't know when I'm doing that. Yeah, <laughs> this just, I, I feel like there's both so much more to do on this and then also not a lot to do on this. And... I don't know it just like it's a lot of elements and it's taking longer than I expected mostly because the daisies take forever so on skirt news I did get the rest of the wall yardage I have washed it I have not pressed it or anything yet and I haven't cut it obviously since I haven't pressed it but this is the same wall it appears to be the same wall that I purchased in the first place so that is great and once I finish the rest of the daisies, my intention is to work on this skirt. So it should, I think, still just be straight panels. I think that's what I'm going to be doing. And so it's probably going to be one panel, three panels, some, I, it's going to be a couple panels. I don't want it to be two panels because then I would have a seam right in the center front and I don't want that. So it's probably going to have to be three panels just because of how much width is going to be needed but it's probably going to be one large panel and two smaller panels and again that is going to be joined to the voile on the back of the skirt 
and just have pocket slits left open at the top before attaching it to a waistband. So like I'm not worried about the skirt taking a long time, the structure of the skirt. I do then have to hem it, but that should again be relatively simple because I'm just hemming it to like slightly tiny bit longer than the underskirt. So it should be pretty straightforward, fingers crossed. And then I have to figure out how to attach the flowers and that's going to be a thing. So I have a feeling that won't, I won't be getting to that in this vlog because it is already like, 11 o'clock or so on Friday night and tomorrow we are doing a spooky photo shoot and that is going to come in next week's vlog though as well because I want this very project focused and so do look for that next week but in any case that will take up some of my sewing time that I would otherwise be spending on this tomorrow. So all that said I don't know how much more I'm going to get done. Definitely going to finish the stitches on the flowers and I should have all of the overskirt except possibly the hem and flowers finished by the end of this vlog I think so okay I am going to get back to work so it is nearly 2 30 a.m aka way later than I had intended to stay up but I did finish the overskirt and by finish I mean it's not actually finished but it uh is on the waistband so it still needs the hem it still needs hooks and bars on the waistband and it still needs obviously all the daisies put on but the skirt itself is otherwise assembled so I'm happy because that's where I had kind of hoped to be tonight and that means that hopefully in whatever sewing time I get tomorrow I can get maybe a little bit farther and at least do those freaking sleeves because I've been putting that off for like a week now and if I do the sleeves, if I get those done this week, that means that the only things that I've left are putting all the daisies on everything. And I think just doing a couple closures and making the hat. So I would really, oh, and I guess a couple other decorations of daisy stuff, but I'd really like to get there. And I think it'll be possible to at least do the sleeves tomorrow, if not even some of those other things. So anyway, good night. I will see you tomorrow. So for everything that I was saying about the sleeve probably being wrong with just doing that rectangle that I had cut out and then never actually tried on, I think it's actually pretty right. I don't know why my strap is falling down. I'll, oh, I guess my strap's falling down because I'm undone up at the top. I did, uh, I tried this on with the hooks and bars just now and my roommate helped me do up the back and I need to actually move over my bars by half an inch. So, uh, sorry, by a full inch. So it's gaping and that's probably why my straps are falling down. But the sleeve, I think, is just about exactly what I want. I feel like the drape is pretty darn close. If anything, maybe it just needs to be a little bit tighter. Uh, the one other thing that I have noticed with the sleeve is that it's just actually like way too sheer compared to everything else. And that's because with all of the rest of the wall, there's something underneath and there's not on the sleeve. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just two layers of wall and then ruche it up and sew it together and sew it into the arm's eye and it's gathered just a little bit into the arm's eye to make it being a rectangle fit into the round arm's eye but I think that is the look that I want and it's just that like slightly longer that makes my arm feel a little bit more comfortable so I'm liking where that is it's a little bit longer than the fashion plate but I do like it and then of course it will have that up on top as well my little daisy I have realized that I think I do need to do the um, sewing lines down the petals like I've done for all of the skirt petals. I thought that the shoulder ones would be okay but I think I'm gonna wind up with like a lot of flapping if I don't do that but I did all of the rest of the flowers last night so that means that I just have these two to do now assuming of course that I only need 13 flowers because I think that's how many I've actually made of the skirt flowers. I have cut out 16 but I didn't do the cuts and the centers and everything on the last three so I probably will have to make those but I don't know I have the skirt and everything on now but I can't actually arrange the flowers on myself so I'm gonna do that back on Lady Jane but I am liking how all of this is looking I don't know how much I can get into frame because my room is too small but it's so like 
It's so chemise a la rain, but Victorian. And I'm even debating about just doing these sleeves in and doing the flowers on kind of gently so that I can then turn this into one of those gorgeous like summer floaty looks. It'll be ankle length, but I don't think that's a big deal. But I could put in like a three quarter sleeve at that point and just have like that gorgeous ethereal look with a regular dress as opposed to one that is Clear, very clearly a daisy costume. And by the way, the reason that my hair is all done up too is because I actually just came back from a spooky photo shoot and that will, I think I mentioned that already, but I, that will go into next week's vlog. So it will be after Halloween. Everyone had a really great time and took lots of beautiful pictures. So look for that next week. That's why my hair's done and why I figured since I had my corset on, I might as well put everything else on anyway. So I am going to cut out, I guess, three more of these so that I can seam them together and have them be two layers and set those in. I should be able to get all of that done tonight. Um, and I also want to get the skirt at least like the hem pinned. I would love to start sewing that as well, but I'm almost certainly going to do that by hand. So I doubt that I can get all of that done tonight. I also did grab out a couple of hats to potentially use as bases for the daisies on top. You know, I haven't tried any daisies on these yet and honestly I think they're a little bit larger than what I figured was scale. I've mentioned this in a previous video but whenever I am doing a drawing so fashion plate or even just like a drawing like with Elsa or anything like that I'd always do that to scale so I always figure out okay well if the skirt is this long on the drawing and it is this long on me and the Daisy is that big on the drawing. This is how big it has to be on me. And so that's what I did with all of these daisies. So I did all of them to scale. And I believe the hat one wound up being a 15 inch daisy. And this is, eh, it's a 16 inch hat. So that's pretty close. This hat is a little bit, well, just a quarter inch larger. It's 16 and a quarter. So either of those I think might be good. Honestly, like this one would be easier to do, but it does already have some kind of cute decoration on it. I bought it already like this at, I think like an estate sale or something. So I wouldn't be super upset about taking these bows off. I don't think I've even ever used this hat. I think I've loaned it out. I would have to probably steam the bottom part back down, but I do think that this would be a decent base for like the giant daisies, obviously much bigger than this. And then I could put it on like that and have the daisy everywhere. So because it's got such a low crown, I think it would be a little easier. So that's probably what I'm gonna do, but that will probably be in next week's video in the remainder of this costume because I'm not gonna finish this tonight, the whole thing. It's just not happening. And it's already Saturday at like 7 p.m. So anyway, all that said, I should probably get out of this so that I can sew it all together so I will check in with you again at the very end of the night and let you know what I have accomplished. Well, I did not do that great of a job of meeting my goal for this week at all because I feel like I have so much left on this bodice. Uh, that said, the sleeves are basically done and they're super, super close to being done, but I wound up having to set them by hand because I had done the binding on the arm side, which was a stupid move. And I don't know why I did that. What that meant was instead of just doing like basically no hand sewing around the arm's eye, I had to do three stitches worth of hand sewing, stitching the binding down, then stitching both sides of the seam of the sleeve down. And I really, really hope that they're in the right position. I mean, I did, like when I tried it on, you know, I had it pinned in the right position. So I hope that was right. But basically, so this is a row of stitching here around the bottom. And then on the inside, this is stitching here. And then you can see that I also have some twill tape right here. And that's all stitched down. That's to hold the ruched part in place. I guess that's it for hand stitching on the arm side, but I had to do that on both of them. And so at this point, 
this one is completely done and then this one still needs about like half I think maybe a little bit more of the stitching around the arms eye on the outside around like the strap and the bodice so and that's just because otherwise it looks weird and gappy if I leave it not stitched so yeah I still have to do the other bit of that I still have to put the trim on the neckline I have to put the flowers on the shoulders I have to move over those three bars on the back of the bodice and I think at that point the bodice will be done other than like the green ribbon bits for the stems which I'm not really sure how to do uh, and then the other thing that I did was I did mark the well I folded up and pinned in place the hem it's not yet pressed in place and I'm a little bit worried that it's a little bit long this is supposed to be kind of ankle length and I just feel like it's gonna be hitting a little bit longer than that so that's a little bit of a concern I also did the stitching down on the little daisies I did do that so I think that's about it for this week's vlog I have a lot of work to do on this and as I've mentioned before you will almost certainly be seeing the reveal of this costume before you see the next part of the vlog so I hope that doesn't totally throw you off but that's what's going to happen unless I just don't finish this by like Wednesday morning I figure I can't go any later than Wednesday because I need to shoot this on Wednesday and then edit the video that will go up Thursday night going into Friday at midnight because that's my usual release time for my Friday videos. So I hope that I finish this all because I'm definitely a little bit worried that I'm not going to and maybe this will be a post Halloween costume that I can't wear this time of year anyway because it's already too cold to wear this costume. <sighs> Sigh. Lane. Thank you. No, not the squeaking. Sit. Sit. Lion has come into the room. You're so good. Here, let's give them doggy content. Come here. Lion just popped into the room and was shaking his collar and everything and threatening to squeak a toy. So I figured he probably wanted to say hi. So here's my scruffy baby saying hi saying that he hopes that I can get everything finished in time. In any case, this is the end of this video. Sorry I've rambled on so long. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this on Tuesdays and my regular content out on Fridays. But I post every day over on my Instagram so please go follow me on Instagram that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions and if you would like to support me and all of the work that I do on this channel I do have a link to my Kofi account down below once again thank you so much for joining me this week I do hope you enjoyed it have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video happy sewing